on, let's go read some objects. Jennifer, I'm the Director of Education at Genesee Country Village and Museum, and I'm here today to teach you the steps that you use to read an object to learn about the past. Now when I said read an object, you might think that sounds a little weird. Uh, when we think about reading things, we think about reading books, we think about reading uh, articles on websites. Uh, we might think about reading uh, things that were written in the past, um, primary sources, things like uh, uh, old newspapers or letters or diaries that were left behind, and that's how we can get information about what the old days were like. Uh, but you can actually read an object as well. what historians do. We have a system, kind of a step-by-step -step system that we use to learn information from an object. We um, uh, do some analysis, we do some evaluation, we, uh, we do some um, formulating of thoughts, we draw conclusions based on the evidence that we have found from, from all of this gathering of information, and that's how we figure out what the past was like using objects. It's a step-by-step -step process, and I'm going to teach you what that is today. The one thing I'm going to caution you about is you might want to jump ahead, because the best part is guessing. Uh, so you might skip all of these steps and go immediately to try to, to guess uh, what the object was and how it was made and how it was used. But I want you to be like an object detective. I want you to use a step-by-step -step approach to do this. And we have put together a worksheet that you can actually use to help you do this. You can actually do this process with any item in your home, uh, as well as items, obviously, that I use here at the museum. So on the worksheet, the very first thing you'll see is that you should draw a quick um, drawing of the object. Now don't worry, if you're like me, I'm not a really good drawler. Just something quick. This helps you look at something a little more closely. Um, so you can start looking at all of the little details on an object. The next step that you're going to do is you're going to use your senses, your five senses. Well, really your four senses. Your five senses are your eyes, your sense of touch, your sense of smell, your sense of hearing, and your sense of taste. But we really shouldn't taste or try to eat an object. That would not be good. We're going to look at the object and we are going to start to describe what it looks like. In the worksheet, you can write down a few words. Um, so maybe the first thing you do is you describe the color of something. Um, you can describe the size. Is it big? Is it small? Its shape? So just some descriptive words using your eye. The next, your sense of touch. So when you touch something, is it smooth or is it rough? Is it heavy or is it light? Um, the shape, is it round or flat or does it have points and sharp edges to it? You can describe that. A lot of objects aren't going to make a noise, but some might. They might have moving parts or hinges open or closed, so they may, might make a noise. In fact, they might be a musical instrument that's supposed to make a noise. So writing what you hear is a good thing to do as well. Now, a lot of objects aren't going to have a smell, or if they do, it might be sort of a musty smell. And that's just because they're old, might have been really restored or how they were kept, that they have a little bit of an odor, but that's not the original smell. Some things might have a smell though. Maybe it was used for cooking. Maybe it used to have spices in it or herbs, and you might be able to smell a little of that uh, left over. Write that down. As I said, don't, don't try to lick or eat the objects. That would be good. Now, after you've written down some of those descriptive words, uh, you'll move on to describing the physical appearance. What is the object made out of? Is it made out of wood? Is it made out of metal? Maybe it's made out of cloth? You'll want to write that down. What size is the object? Now, you can get really technical. You can get a ruler and measure precisely, 
or maybe just be sort of vague, like it's as big as my hand, or it's as long as my arm, or it's just as tiny as my finger. Those are good descriptors too. How heavy is the object? Is it light? Is it really heavy? Is it actually lighter than you thought it would be, or heavier than you thought it would be? As I said, some of the objects might have parts to them. They might open or close. You'll want to write that down. Does it have different things that open or close? Is it made up of many parts or is it just one item? Also, talk about if there are decorations on the object or maybe there's something printed on the object. Sometimes when people of the past made things, they might have put their initials or their signature on it to show that they made it. Maybe they had a very special stamp that they would use. Maybe they wanted it to be colorful and painted it and decorated it in some fashion. Um, when factories came along, factories might print something into the object. It might list the year it was made or the company that made it. You'll want to write that down too. After we've described the physical look of an object, then we try to figure out what the object can tell us. Do you think it was made? Do you think it was handmade? Or was it made in a factory? Um, did one person make it or many people? Who do you think the object was made by? Uh, was it made by a man? Was it made by a woman? Was it made by a child? Was it made um, by nature? Maybe you found an object that uh, originally came from nature. Um, so describe who you think made the object. How do you think the object works? What do you think its function is? How do you think people of the past used it? And when do you think the object was made um, or used? If there's a date on it, that's pretty easy to figure out. But other times you might have to think about like the material it was made out of. When do you think that might have been in existence? Like plastic. It hasn't been long around all that long. Uh, whereas things like wood or metal have been around a lot longer. Why do you think the object was made? What was its purpose? Why do you think people used it? And who do you think used it? Was it made specifically and used by a woman or a man or children? The next thing you want to do is why might the object be important? Why do you think it was saved? Um, do you think it was something special? Do you think people just forgot about it and it ended up being left behind and, and eventually found uh, by historians and saved? Why do you think it might still exist? Final question, what do you think the object is? Now when you get to this question, you're going to want to look over all of the information you filled out on your sheet. You're going to want to take all of that evidence you put together and use that to help, help back up the conclusion you're making. So instead of wildly guessing at the beginning, which you might have attempted to, having put together all of this evidence, that will help you have a decision as to why you think something is, it, is what it is. Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, we'll be doing more installments of this, looking at specific objects here at the museum. So I hope you join us. Have a great day.